everybody, my name is Kai and I'm going to show you how to drive an unsynchronized manual transmission. Um, starting these is the same as starting uh, a regular modern manual transmission except you have to do a couple extra steps. Um, put it in neutral, you can start it in any position, you know, just like a modern, but say, for safety put it in neutral and put the parking brake on. This is the choke, um, if it's cold you have to pull the choke out, but since we're not cold, we don't need to. This is, in a, this is the gas, and then this is also the gas. This pedal right here, as you can see that pedal move as I pull the gas lever down. Um, and this is the spark advance, which you can use to also control the engine. Beyond that, turn the key, press the start button, which is down in there, which should start right up. You give it a little adjustment on the gas, you get it going, and now we're ready to roll. Then, parking brake off, put it in first, which is here, one, two, three, reverse is top left. So it's only a four block H. First is bottom left, pop in Amber. Then we'll start going. Just like driving a regular manual, let off the brake, give it a little bit of gas and let the clutch out slowly. And we'll start to move. Then once we've built up a little bit of speed, we get ready to shift. Um, so the easiest way to do it is to double clutch, like so. Clutch in, stick into neutral, clutch out, clutch in again, stick into second, clutch out. Now we're in second. All right, so to shift back down, what you have to do is match the RPMs as to the wheel speed, the RPMs of the engine. Um, once you shift into a lower gear ratio, the engine has to be spinning higher to match the same wheel speed. So what you gotta do is clutch in, let her out, double clutch again, and then re up the gas just a little bit, it's just that little bit of gas then lets it match RPMs and then you clutch back out and now we're back into first. All right, so the reason we need to do this is because this car does not have a synchronizer gear like a modern car. That means we need to synchronize the wheel RPMs and the engine RPMs manually. So when we're going along in first, we need to shift up. So like, you know, engine RPMs and the wheel RPMs are going, but as the wheel RPMs are gonna change, but the engine RPMs have to go down because we're gonna get into a higher gear ratio. So we have to let the RPMs fall while we're in neutral and then put it into second. Um, double clutching helps you time this. It also sort of resets the transmission, but you take it out, you put the clutch in, you take it, you put it into set neutral, and then you let it RPMs fall for a second and a half, maybe two seconds, and then you put it into second. Should be about the right amount of time, but it depends on if you're going uphill, downhill, whether there's weight in the car, it's really by feel. Um, and the gears may grind a little bit. Don't slam it, the transmission, otherwise you'll break them. But if you hear a couple of little clicks, that's okay. Uh, shift back down is a little harder. You have to raise the RPM. So now we're going back the other way. We're in the second, the lower engine RPMs so if the wheel speed stays constant. We have to raise the engine RPMs back up to first gears ratio because um, we're going into a lower gear. So what you have to do is clutch in, put it in neutral, give it a little bit of gas to raise the RPMs and then you know put it in to first and then clutch back out. Um, okay. Uh, the, the other features of this car are uh, we've got our fuel gauge here, which is actually a sight of actual gas. You can see in there and it floats that sight up with how much gas there is. Speedometer, odometer, amp meter, which tells you if the battery is draining or charging. Um, this is just the footrest right here. This is, like I said, the duplicate of the gas pedal. That's the starter button. But this gas pedal also moves as I pull down the gas lever. Um, like I said, spark advances over here are this other bunny ear. This is the headlight on off. Windshield wiper is manual. You have to uh, then get the windshield wiper to go. The mirrors are add-ons back in 1930. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing was, was not a given. Um, there is a little foot warmer, a little bit of heater down there. Although this car puts off so much heat from the engine normally, I can't imagine ever using it. Um, inside, we also have the horn and the Awuga horn. Uh, which you could mount on the front. Then we have the gas tank, which is right here on top of the hood. Nice and tough to fill. Um, we've got our headlights up here. We've got our radiator cap. This is called the Quail. This is a, a Ford Model A radiator cap design, but if you twist that open, you can get to the radiator. A warning for any of you who have not had much experience with old cars, don't open the radiator when it's hot. Hot steam will scald you. 
Um, and around on the back, we have our rumble seat out on front. Um, the rumble seat sits right over the back axle, so they don't call it that for nothing. It really rattles you around. And if you're not using it, you can just close it right up. Which is nice and neat. We've only got a single brake and reverse light. Um, there's not one on the other side. We've got an additional trunk. Um, nor a lot of cars would just have a wooden rack here that you could strap an old tiny wooden trunk like a Harry Potter like a giant suitcase to. This one actually has one on it. We've got two steps to help you get into the rumble seat. So you step up on those two and, and hop in. Like so. And we've got the top that even comes up. 